Hey, welcome to Global Environment. Uh, today we're talking about a new topic. Uh, we're getting into ecological economics. Now, let, let's think about a few things to kind of get us ready, get us in the mood for this topic. Now, if I were to ask you, what kind of what kind of science is economics? If you had to classify it, what would you say? What would you come up with? All right, think about that. Because you might say it's a social science, and, and, and that's an important idea, because most, most people consider economics as a social science. And if I were to give you a common definition for economics, uh, it might be something like how people make decisions with scarce resources how people make decisions with scarce resources. And that even sounds like a social science definition, people making decisions, you know, that kind of thing. Now, now what, what does that really mean? Well, let's think about it. I left my house late this morning, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm running out of the house. My wife is yelling at me. She's saying, take out the garbage, and I don't have any time. I just run out, um, so, you know, I know I'm in big trouble, and I, I didn't even have time to eat breakfast. So I'm driving to work. I'm driving to work and I'm thinking, oh, I got to do something. I got to do something. So I look in my wallet. I've got $5, okay? Um, now, th those are my limited resources. Now, the decisions I have to make, should I get the Egg McMuffins or should I get the flowers for my wife? I got to make that decision with my scarce resources. You know, so I got the Big Macs. You know, I'll figure it out later. But that's an example of you know, kind of your, your neoclassical economics, which is generally what you're taught in school. All around the world, people are taught neoclassical economics. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you in this, in this section is that neoclassical economics has some serious problems, uh, especially when it's dealing with the environment. And we'll show you how it really has uh, problems with things like commons, and dealing with energy issues later on, okay? Um, now, why are we talking about economics in an environmental studies class or environmental science class? Really, when you think about it, almost every environmental problem has a connection with economics. People have wants and needs, and to supply these wants and needs, they draw resources from the environment. So if you think about, um, you know, just going to your job, you've got to drive a car maybe, and that emits carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and there you have global climate change. Anytime you buy something and you use it up, you dispose of it, uh, that contributes to things like water, air, um, and, uh, you know, uh, pollutants that are found in, in things like uh, garbage dumps, okay? So that's the connection there. So we're going to hit that hard. Now, to understand... Um, where we're going, I want to propose a, a, a few things. One is, do you have an idea about what a model is? What is a model? Now, if, I, if, you, if you're going along the, the lines of a model as a representation of reality, um, you're on the right track. So something that represents reality. Now, how is it different than reality? One, one difference is that it's much more simple. And if we used examples, I mean, what is, what is a good model of the Earth you might use? You know, one might be a globe, another one might be a map. Okay, fine. Now, a map, very useful. Models are useful. It, it helps you understand how things work. Okay? But are there any problems with models? If we take the map, for example, if you've ever seen on a map, what does Greenland look like on a map? You know, besides being white. Often it's really huge. It, it looks bigger than Australia. Um, sometimes Antarctica looks like the biggest continent. Why is that? Because you're taking a sphere, the Earth, you're stretching out the, the poles to get a, a flat map, and you get distortion. So models are useful, but as you can see in the example of the map, sometimes they're inaccurate, and we'll come back to that. The other thing we got to think about is the second law of thermodynamics. What is the second law of thermodynamics? Um, you, if, you're, if you're thinking of things like entropy and disorder, you're on the right track. And the form we want to use in this is about energy efficiency and energy transformations. Now, 
if I was to climb up on this table and touch these, these, these lights here, you know, um, we want light energy. That's why we have these lights, okay? And it's coming from electrical energy. But if I touch those lights when I'm standing up, they're hot. Now, we don't, we don't want heat, especially in this room, because it's hot enough. But we get heat. Now, think of this. I drove to work today. I wanted kinetic energy. I wanted to go, and it's from potential chemical energy in the fuel. Now, if I touch the hood, it's warm. I didn't want heat. But I got it. Now, this is a result of the second law of thermodynamics, because any energy transformation, is they're never 100% efficient. And usually you lose energy as heat. And that's important because we'll come back to that, okay? Now what we're going to do in the next section, the next segment, is we're going to bring economics, laws of thermodynamics, and the idea of models together and um, really do an evaluation of neoclassical economic model, which I alluded to, okay? So I'll see you next time and uh, we'll, we'll hit those models.